Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Luke Derry. I do web development at Red Hat. Uh, you may know Red Hat if you are an enterprise developer. We are most familiar, most recognized for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, OpenShift, and then if you've used Java and some of our middleware, uh, that'd be probably the most likely. We also have other things that we make, and you may be familiar with those as well. I'm going to be talking today about Godot for the enterprise and how uh, I'll, I'll describe how Red Hat has used Godot. I will talk about some ideas about how any enterprise could use Godot. And then I'll also talk about how enterprises can give back to Godot. Uh, the first time I used Godot was in 2019 for one of our uh, technical demos at our big conference called Red Hat Summit. Uh, I was tasked with creating a factory, and this was a cartoon factory, where mechanics would go and repair machines based on instructions given to them by an application called OptiPlanner. OptiPlanner would get data from our audience members who were using their phones, uh, gyroscopes, and motion detection to create data representative of what would be equivalent to a, a machine uh, vibration that would reflect breakage. So the more a machine vibrates, there are sensors that dictate that at some point it's a threshold of, that it would break. So that breakage would reflect in OptiPlanner and OptiPlanner would dispatch mechanics to go fix machines in a particular order based on their distance and uh, in a way that was most efficient. It was a lot of fun. I used an isometric map uh, and navigation tiles and all the stuff that, that I had never used before. And I had never done any game engine development. So it was, it was a lot of fun to learn that. Um, it was actually fairly quick. I was surprised how easy it was to go from an idea to finding you know, a tutorial or documentation or, or you know, something that was helpful to get me to the point that I needed to, and then have the freedom to change it and do what I needed to really quickly, given GD script and, and some of the things that Godot provides in the editor. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And the, I thought the demo was a lot of fun for people to participate in. And then being able to see it on the big screen there at Red Hat Summit uh, was, was a big, like to me, it was a big victory. Uh, the next thing that came up uh, in late 2019 in November a team from across the company got brought together to with tasked with creating a game. Uh, the game was ended up being called Pod Escape, and it followed a pod. If you're familiar with uh, container programming and, and technical jargon, a pod to me is like an at atomic piece of, of a container that uh, a cluster that can be brought up and taken down, and the the pod is is trying to escape being deleted. And so it's an infinite runner where you, your little pod is trying to run and jump and dodge obstacles and things like that. And it was it was meant to be released in an arc, a physical arcade uh, in our 2020 Red Hat Summit, uh, which ended up going dig all virtual. And so we went from being something where it would be installed inside an arcade box to serving it on the web during our, our conference for attendees to go do. Lots of great feedback about that, and and it was it was one of the most popular things uh, besides the main conference topics that that the, the offering had. Uh, also for that 2020 summit, uh, I was involved with another technical demo, and in this demo, the the task was twofold. It was first to uh, be able to visualize a global network of clusters that were being managed by. Uh, some of Red Hat software, and and so there was a, a start with a 3D. You know, we thought Glow, well, okay, 3D. Uh, so we did a 3D representation, and then we went down that route. And lo and behold, at some point, we said, you know what? Let's let's make it more simple and and less uh, full of detail. And we went from 3D to 2D. And some might think, oh man, that's 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 a huge leap. But Godot made it so easy because just changing the nodes, I could take some of the pieces that we had used and the, the logic that we'd used in our 3D scene and use it in the 2D scene. So it wasn't it wasn't a big deal. That one was really simple as far as user interaction because it just was keyboard commands to advance the animation that was going through. So the camera would animate and or we would switch cameras and 
Um, so it was, it was very, very similar to like a slideshow, but with more dynamic uh, elements. And in, in the initial round in the 3D, we were actually gathering uh, data feeds and, and animating those, but we decided to make, slim it down a little bit when, when we figured out how complex that made it. So we went from two, 3D to 2D, and it was not a big leap for that, and it was very simple to do with Godot. And uh, the other piece of that technical demo was a leaderboard. And so in the leaderboard, uh, we people that were participating during the conference, during the, the summit, the demo, uh, were trying to guess prices, and they were dragging and dropping uh, numbers to guess prices of certain objects that were given to them. And uh, that data would then be sent back to a server. And then based on their accuracy of guessing, they would get points. And so the leaderboard took their avatars and their scores and presented them in a ladder form to show uh, what, who was ahead in points. And that was a lot of fun to, to program. The sprites were dynamic based on you know, a simple uh, array of numbers to pick the, the shapes and things. Um, the, the leaderboard itself had had pathing so that you could figure out where, where people popped in and out. And uh, it was it was a really fun thing to do for me because it was a little bit different. It was still taking service requests and, and getting data back uh, in the same way that we did in the mechanics demo. But it was a little bit different because it was more, more animated and, and moving along uh, based more on user input directly. Uh, so th those are the ways uh, Red Hat also has participated in conferences where they have sat on panels due to the open source nature of, of Godot and Red Hat's products. Um, they've sat on panels in various discussions. I haven't been part of those, but I know I know of their, their existence and that they've happened. Uh, but let me take a step outside of Red Hat. And if we look at the enterprise landscape in general, I'd like to propose three contexts in which Godot can be used in the enterprise. Some, some are obvious, some less obvious, and then some are completely not obvious. Uh, the obvious ones would be things that are game-like contexts. So, you know, the summit demos, those make sense because they are game-like in, in their rules and, and what they're trying to accomplish. Um, I think that as an enterprise, it, it's it's actually a good endeavor to try to create a game in Godot, even if it's a simple one to understand the mechanics and to do do something along the lines of team building to to take a multidisciplinary team and create something that other people can have fun with and and potentially use. Uh, to me, that's a, that's a great thing to use Godot for in the enterprise and not wasted because there there are places where I think team building in general is, is a big, big strength now. And especially with virtual, because people are not back in the office and seeing each other in person, sometimes virtual is all we get. And so, you know, recently one of the teams I'm on played uh, Among Us and it was a lot of fun and we got that shared experience, even though it, it didn't have a necessarily a strict work benefit, we got to grow together as a team and, you know, the communication and the, the camaraderie that's developed because of that, is a lot of it's it's a benefit to the company one way or another. Um, so team building games and building out games that promote team building and and things like escape rooms. You know, you think about things you do as a team to do uh, build up that team dynamic. The, the Godot has the mechanics built into its engine to provide those. So even if you didn't, the the building of the game wasn't the thing. Creating a game that that is relevant for your, your enterprise and your company to then have fun with as teams across the company would be a great thing. Pretty obvious because that's what Godot does, right? It makes games. Um, so let me talk about less obvious ways. I, I call this the gamification context. So uh, you're a new hire and you're going through orientation. A lot of what is asked of you is very uh, methodical and you have to go through certain stages to get to the end of new hire orientation, a lot of that can be gamified, right? In the same way that an MMORPG uh, has quests and, and you know, you get accomplishments and achievements and rewards and things like that. Any of that type of logic 
can be built in into something that Godot does. So imagine you're doing new hire orientation and now nowadays people might not be able to go back into the office in person to do this. But at some point you want to prepare them to re-enter the office. And if they can't go there, they're never going to know what it looks like. So Godot has AR and VR types of uh, ability. We could theoretically have VR tours of the office with built-in achievements for learning things about that you're supposed to learn during new hire orientation. I think that would be a lot of fun and a lot different than just doing simple video conferences. I think it it's not something that I've heard anyone doing, but I'd love to see people doing that. The, another one that's come up recently, depending on the company you work for, for us, we had to, we've had to do our ethics and compliance training. So uh, that type of, uh, and hopefully you all did it. It's a yearly, you know that, right? Don't, don't wait on that. Uh, I think that's something where it also has, you know, for us, it's multiple choice questions and you have to answer them correctly to know that you've uh, achieved knowledge of uh, the material. So instead of having videos and, you know, multiple choice quizzes at the end, imagine having a world where your interactions and your quests work towards that achievement. I think it would be a lot different and a lot more interactive than what we do now. I think, you know, compliance people may have issue with making sure that you you can't game the system um, and make sure that, you know, you have learned your harassment and your bribery and, and all the things that you need to know not to do and what not to do and how to deal with them. I think those are important things. I think the context is you can do that in different ways and still achieve the same results. So the other one that came to mind as far as gamification would be, you know, in the same fashion that we did a leaderboard for our technical demo, uh, being able to do something like a sales board <clears throat> where you see who's in the lead for sales or uh, even if it's fundraising or, you know, something like that where you have as an enterprise uh, the ability to have a, a dynamic and interactive board where people could theoretically, you know, go do something or it can just display the results as a, as a result of uh, data coming in to some other system. So I think those, the gamification of, of content uh, is an easy, easy thing to do in Godot. It's already been demonstrated, at least for me, that it's possible. Um, and I think, I think for me, it's one of the more enjoyable things because it doesn't require user interaction. You're just taking data in and presenting it. And Godot does visualization very well. And especially I'm looking forward to, you know, updates coming in, in version four uh, that will just continue and further, further down the road, you know, further enhance that ability. Some of the not so obvious ways that I think an enterprise can utilize Godot uh, would be literally anywhere that you can put your brain into a Godot context. I think one of the ones that popped up in my head that was most like, oh yeah, that would be a great place to use Godot is to replace a slide deck. We all love a good slide deck, don't get me wrong. There are some wizards out there that can just do magical things with slides that, you know, with animation and things like that. But the interactivity and the dynamic nature of them is not there. Compare that to service calls and things that Godot can do, even, even without some type of backend system, you can do some great things with Godot that you couldn't do in slides. Take deep dives into information and open, open videos and things like that, where in a slide, you really have a static set of things you can do. Godot gives you some depth, and the portability of nodes means that you can have scripts and things that could be drag and droppable for content creators that may not know how to program. They would be able to inject things that do the right stuff fairly easily into the Godot editor and make the stuff that they want to present to the company. That, that goes hand in hand with the other place that I think is a not so obvious way of integrating Godot in, which is replacing and enhancing your brand presentations. So uh, Godot as a visualization tool is amazing. You know, Red Hat has very strict guidelines as far as our brand standards for, especially like animated and video content. Um, and so having those things 
codified into Godot nodes and being able to translate them into different contexts. And especially since a lot of what we're doing is on the web, the ability for Godot to export to the web and, and being able to put those things into a page, they don't have to be full screen games, right? They can just be little boxes. Anything you can think of that can go on the web that, that expresses your brand can be done in Godot, whether it's 3D, 2D, you know, it, you can go any, any, any direction with that. So those are the ways that I think that Godot can be used for the enterprise. Let's turn that on its head and say, how can enterprises work more for Godot? And I think there are three ways to do that. First is start using Godot. Use it in, in whatever way you can. For me, it's been using it in technical demos and, and you know just generally thinking about ways that I can put Godot into use within my enterprise context. Uh, contribute back to Godot. Uh, one thing I'm working on, and I'll hopefully have links and demonstration at the point that this uh, talk is aired, uh, is I'm working on a container image that will help people to use CICD uh, flows to create and, and compile their games, or at least their projects, Godot projects. Um, I'm using, using software called Builda, and that kind of goes hand in hand with our container catalog type of structure with Builda and Podman and Scopio. And, you know, I'm, I'm pulling the party line, the, the company line here, but um, it's, a, it's a really interesting prospect to me to be able to have the ability to make Godot work in a container uh, context. And so uh, I'm looking forward to having contributors help with that. Uh, take take my knowledge and you know enhance it, and that's that's the benefit of open source. So contribute back as an enterprise, contribute back to Godot, the, the community. There's always ways to contribute that are not strictly coding Godot, the engine. There's documentation. There's creating tutorials, uh, and and so contribute back, and that's that's kind of the open source ethos. If if you're going to use it, you should contribute back. And there's easy ways to do that with Godot. Uh, and then the final thing would be to promote it within your enterprise and with that, you know, outside of it too. Take the time to tell people about your success with Godot and, and the things you enjoy about it and communicate and, and promote it within the, the Godot community and also within your external communities. We, most of us developers, we're doing things virtually now. So you have, you have almost a captive audience every time you go to a virtual meeting whether it's a meetup or, or some technical group you're part of, if Godot makes sense in some way, tell people about it. That's what I would say. So that's that's how I, I could quickly summarize Godot for the enterprise. I think it's a great thing. Um, definitely check out the blog post where they have, have called for more enterprise level contributions and participation and, and look to see how, if you are an enterprise developer or know someone who is, See if you can't get them into Godot. All right. Thank you. I think there's going to be a time for Q&A at some point here, and I'll, I'll be online for that.